Welcome back to another Mind Hack episode. I am your host today, John Nothing. And today, we're going to talk about aliens. Yeah, that's right. The ones that come down and abduct people. The psychology of aliens, right? We have all heard of them. We've all seen the movies. We've all seen the uh, the cartoons, the, the, the comic books, the uh, Star Wars, the Star Trek. You know, all of the universes of, uh, you know, the Marvel, the DC, all the realms of people's concepts of aliens. Right. But let's talk about the actual reason why we have not run into aliens yet. All right. <laughs> the, the, the elephant in a room. And uh, it's not because you haven't done enough uh, drugs or anything like that, or you haven't been caught out in the middle of a field. You haven't been caught in the middle of a field and, uh, you know, this flying saucer comes over your head and snatches you up and does whatever and plants you back in your bedroom nice and safely. And you have you have no memory of the last day. No, none of that. None of that. The reason why you have not ran into aliens is because if aliens were out there, they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care about you. They wouldn't care about Earth. They wouldn't care about anything like that. They would already know the numbers. If they're able to travel across the galaxy travel across solar systems, starways, they would already know the numbers, right? The thing is, you guys know the numbers already. You know that there's a high probability of life being out there and life being out there exactly like us too, um, in some way or shape, bipedal organisms running around a planet, destroying it. Yeah, it's highly likely. But what's even more likely What's even more likely is a non-bipedal organism running around a planet. Where am I going with this? You see, you watch alien movies that are created in the last, you know, 30 to 40 years. And alien stories in general have spanned, you know, human history. But the creatures that we're running into in these stories, why? Why do they always look like us? You see, why why do they have to look like us? The physics that are here on this planet are unique to this solar system. Like even in the solar system, it's unique. All right. So you have so many other planets that look a lot like or their their makeups are a lot like each other. They're gaseous planets or they're solid rock planets. They have they barely have any atmosphere or some of them do have atmosphere and it's you know, crushing, right? You have a lot more of those type of dynamics throughout the universe than you have a planet like ours. So tell me, again, why do they have to look like us? Have you ever thought that all of these movies are, are feeling the, the concept? No, they're not feeling the concept. They're giving you a story that you want to believe, and it's very believable. Because the truth of the matter is, is that when you look at the microorganisms on Earth, they're hardly affected by gravity, like we are, because we're large, right? The microorganisms that float around in the air, float around in the ocean, as if there's no gravity, right? That's what's probably going to be the most common thing out there in the universe. You have gaseous planets with crushing te- temp- cr- crushing pressures as you enter its atmosphere. Crushing, you know? Some of them are smaller than us and have a higher density you know, and higher gravity. Some of them are way larger than us, gaseous planets, and way, way less than us. You know, I, I, not weight, but you know, mass. They have less mass than us, so therefore the gravity is not, you know, as strong. Because gra- mass and gravity are directly related. Weight is something different. Um, you have a lot of planets out there that that fit that motif. Big gaseous planet, you know, and. It would make more sense for a creature that lives on that planet to look like the creatures that are very simple here on this planet. Right. Single cell organisms, multi cell organisms, whatever, whichever ones. They have a three dimensional structure, you know, like most organisms on this planet. But their structure is dictated by the gravity and their surroundings, just like ours, just like our body is, you know. So if you have a. A huge ratio of planets that are gaseous out there there's, there's a high probability that the creature that's out there is going to be looking like a cell 
<laughs> yeah, looking like a single cell organism, looking like a multi cell organism, looking like a blob, you know, with tentacles reaching out in every direction. You know, eyes would probably be a very uncommon thing in the universe. Eyes, unless you're on a dry planet um, with an atmosphere and, you know, the, the nature of that planet is, you know, similar to ours, then I guess eyes will probably matter. Depends on how, you know, things have evolved on that planet. But the most common story is gaseous planets and watery planets and rock planets. And so it would make sense that these planets would vary in gravity, you know, uh, you know, and gravitational environments. You know, this, you know, you got planets that probably have life close to its core and nowhere else. Planets that probably have life at the very edge of its atmosphere and nowhere else, you know, just because of uh, compounds being able to form. And I, when I say compounds, guys, I'm talking about the ones that we're familiar with that we call life. The organic compounds that bunch together and eventually form life. All right. Those are the ones that we're most familiar with. You know, the oxygen, the hydrogen and nitrogen. Right. And then, uh, you know, you have the building blocks. They're, they're, those are the most common ones that you find in the building blocks of, you know, you know, life like organisms. You know, so so you're probably thinking, oh, what about carbohydrates? Well, yeah, carbohydrates exist, but you have to have oxygen, nitrogen and um, and uh, hydrogen. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, whenever you go to a solar system that has those conditions, right, you're going to find planets that look a lot like ours. All right. Not, they don't look like Earth, Earth like planets. They look like other type of planets. Right. The gaseous ones, the watery ones, the rocky ones, because that's that's what happens most often, you know, in, in, in the material universe. Right. And so life would form on those planets. If it does, it's going to form like the most simplest you know, form of uh, creatures here, you know, they're, they're going to be three dimensional shaped creatures, not bipedal walking around with two legs, two arms, two eyes. Nah, man. Nah. Even, even eyes are kind of a, a weird thing in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've just been, you know, arrogant thinking that there's going to be something out there that looks like us. No, no, no. More than likely it's already come and it's already gone. And, and, uh, it has no uh, interest in us. I mean, think about this for a minute, right? Let's say, for instance, that there is uh, a new species of cockroach. A new species of cockroach. You like cockroaches? No, I didn't think so. And this new species popped up in Houston, Texas. And where are you? Doesn't matter where the fuck you are. Doesn't matter. It popped up in Houston, Texas. It is only in Alfred's yard. Alfred lives in some suburb off, off of Houston. It is only in his yard that that one new species of cockroach lives are you gonna gather up your family throw them in a minivan take a trip on down to alfred's yard in houston 500 4, miles away take time out of your day or whatever to go see those new cockroaches are you gonna do that no you don't care no you're not your, your kids don't care your wife doesn't care. she's gonna leave you if you do <laughs> you know th this isn't this isn't even a discussion you're not gonna go all right. That's not interesting. And that's what I'm saying is that aliens don't see us as any more interesting as you see that that cockroach over in Alfred's yard in Houston. Right. Get it. They exist. Tons of cockroaches exist. You don't care. You've walked past cockroaches a million times. In fact, you've avoided them. Yeah. You've tried to kill them. Yeah. Yeah. You've gone out of your way to, to make sure that they can't even reach you. You've gone out of your way to make sure that cockroaches cannot reach you. Yeah. Yeah. And you're thinking that aliens that are advanced that can fly across the, uh, the, the solar system, they're going to look at us and say, oh, that's interesting. No, no, man. You already go to a zoo and see an animal, a creature that looks similar to you. It's bipedal, has five fingers, five, you know, uh, ten, ten fingers, ten toes, two eyes, a nose. It even behaves like us. And you say to yourself that that creature is a laughingstock, the monkey. Any simian creature. You even see that we have similar genes. You, you find out that we have 99% the same genes. And you still feel like you're above them. And you are not taking time out of your day to go see the monkeys. And when you do, they're a laughing stock. You don't want to even get in the cage. Yeah. That's, that's the facts about, that's the psychology behind aliens, guys. Is that if you were an alien, you wouldn't even approach us 
ever. We're roaches of the solar system, unfortunately. You have to come off the high horse, okay? Nobody likes you. And out in the universe, nobody likes you. <laughs> You're not special. <laughs> in fact, think of it as like termites. Not even roaches, termites, because they're they're out there doing damage. We're out here doing damage to our own planet. Imagine that our planet is in somebody's backyard, you know, some alien species backyard. And they're like, man, they, these, these humans, they keep messing up this planet. I've been trying to keep this planet tidy for how long now? Why can't I keep this? All right, man, I'm going to call it the exterminators. Come and spray this planet. We just sprayed this planet a million years ago. We just sprayed it. We literally came out and flooded this planet <laughs> 10,000 years ago. And look, they're back. How many times we got to do this? You know, can't they just cooperate? Can't they just stay underground or go back in their caves? Why? Why do you keep coming out of your cave? <laughs> you know, that's where we're at in the universe, guys. We're the termites. Nobody likes us. And that's the psychology of aliens. I'm John Nothing. I'm out.